Okay, so Star Trek Discovery, Season 4, Episode 6, Stormy Weather. I'm going to give my thoughts on this episode. Okay, so, like I said, Season 4, Episode 6 of Star, Te Star Trek Discovery. This episode is entitled Stormy Weather. Now, following on from the end of the last episode where this anomaly sort of vanished from one place and appeared in another, it's left a subspace rift. Um, and the Discovery is tasked with going into this rift to collect data essentially to to go into the anomaly not the anomaly into the rift left behind um to gather whatever information it can gather from in there to help it out with its um investigation so off the ship goes in and um when they get inside it's literally it, it's black there's nothing there they've got no computer readings nothing there's it's it's dead it's silent it's you know there's nothingness and and inevitably they end up getting stuck within this rift and have to work their way out now they do send out one of them little robots which ends up getting eaten so to speak when it's so far off from the ship as it gets destroyed and it starts screaming um yeah so now as this episode's progressing the we found out in the last episode that obviously the the the, the on-board computer of the ship has, has got sentience and we know this um, but it started to develop feelings and this sort of a thing so it, it, it struggles within this episode and Grey um, who's recently received the body um, has uh, interacted with it and, and trying to bring it out of its um, uh, you know out of its self so to speak to help it cope with the feelings that it's having and these new emotions and all this sort of a thing um, book um, he gets involved a lot in that they decide to try and jump the ship out, um, you know, um, and he's the one who operates the spore drive, but in doing so, it goes wrong, and he gets, an elect he gets electrocuted, that does something to him, and he can now see his father, he's having halluc hallucinations of his father, and having a hard time from him, and all this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so... They do manage to get out at the end with um, Michael Berman putting everyone on board the ship into the sort of um, matter drive, so to speak, or into the, you know, when, when they go through the transporter and they're sort of in that buffer, in that buffer space, which Star Trek has done before, that's what I forget what it's called. Um, but anyway, so it's a solution that's been in Star Trek before. Um, she's the one who pilots the ship out, um, you know what I mean? It's this sort of nonsense. So anyway, I say nonsense. Um... I'm finding this series harder and harder to watch and I, I was sat watching it and, and I was thinking why what what's the issue with it um a lot of the characters obviously are underdeveloped um book has stepped up almost to be like the the second main character on board the ship um a lot of the series is a re revolving around him as well as Michael Berman they seem to be the primary two even Saru has been sidelined um, and, and this isn't great. Now, you know, the problems I have with this show, um, Star Trek's always been progressive. It always has. I mean, you go back to the original series and Gene Roddenberry had this idea of this, this you know, this future where everyone was friends. There was no issue with race and this sort of a thing. And, you know, it introduced uh, Nisha Nichols as Uhura, um, you know, a black female as as a primary member of the cast and this was like refreshing back in the day then something you hadn't seen before and then Star Trek had the very first interracial kiss um, as we know between Kirk and Uhura um, then when we came to Star Trek Deep Space Nine we were given a black captain with Avery Brooks as 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 Commander Cisco. Then Star Trek Voyager came along. We were given a female captain um, with Kate Mulgrew as Captain Catherine Janeway. So the program's always made these strides and these bounds. Um, and and Star Trek Discovery isn't without exception in that. In that you've got the other female black lead, um, 
you know, an equal Martin Green, um, and you got a couple of like transsexuals on board as well, or you know, you know, the two characters. I mean, I don't know what they identify as or whatever, and, and to be honest, I don't much care. Um, the problem is at this point is that in Star Trek in the past, it never felt like it was making a political you know stance or, or sending you a message giving you this message you know star trek deep space nine one of my, my favorite star trek tv series and i love david brooks in it i thought it was fantastic i love the character of um, benjamin cisco um but i never felt like it was pushing something onto me some agenda some agenda driven thing been shoved down my throat with it no it was just accepted that he was this black commander fantastic but now star trek seems to be having you know it's, it's just enveloped in this this nonsense of shoving crap down my throat that i don't want shoved down my throat um i've got no problem with what they're doing with the casting or anything like that i've got a problem with it using it as a political soundstage to shove crap down my throat uh and not only that, the only issue, other issue I have with this series currently, and again, I've sat there watching it and watching this episode. Um, now, this episode is is tired writing. There's nothing fresh in this episode whatsoever. Um, you know, we've had in previ all the previous Star Trek iterations, the ship gets stuck in some sort of spatial anomaly and they have to figure their way out. And that's what this episode does. That's what this episode essentially is. Um, the fact that it's to do with the primary issue involved in this series of the of the thing is is makes no difference it's inside a a, a, a spatial anomaly um but the primary issue that i've found now with this this particular series of star trek and the story it's telling you is there's no protagonist yes um sorry there's no antagonist protagonist there's no antagonist in this series. You've got the anomaly, which is causing these problems, and them going. So you lose, you lose a wealth of of of, of strong writing of of the button of heads between characters and this sort of thing. Everything in this series is revolving around the people on board the ships, who are all friends, who all know each other. There's no outside influence interfering with them. In, in a character sense uh, for them, you know, a big bad for them to go up against or anything like this. That may change as the episode progresses, but bear in mind we're six episodes in now um, and, and this makes for boring TV. Um, it's all right having an episode where, you know, you have got an anomaly, but this is taking something that could be a one episode story and you've stretched it out across an entire season. Um, we'll have to see where it goes, but that's just my thoughts lastly. So, to be honest, I felt while watching this episode, and I have done with previous episodes of this season, that I could fast forward. I could watch this on shuttle search. I ain't going to miss nothing. Um, and, and I know how it's going to end before it ends because, again, it's just storytelling that's been done before and it's just wrapped up in a brand new package and that's it. Um, anyway, so that was my review for this episode. Not particularly great. Um, obviously, the show looks fantastic as it does big budget and this sort of thing, but the writing is stinks. It's rubbish. Um, anyway, so that was it for this episode and I'll see you later. Take care and I'll see you. Is there an episode on next week? I'm assuming there is. If there is, I'll give that a watch and I'll give you my thoughts on that. Um, this is AJ. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. It's Christmas. Give. That's what Christmas is about. Give by pressing that button. Anyway, it's AJ. See you later. Take care all and goodbye.